You sound like the Red Skull. Just uh, then. five alpha. <laughs> because Austria. Because because yeah. Okay. Anyway, so. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Not So Round Table. We're joined today by a very good friend of mine, uh, I mean, a good friend of uh, the crew here at evic.com. Yeah, we're all uh, friends. Sorry, I didn't, mean to, <laughs> I didn't mean to isolate it like that. It was just... He, okay, it, don't be just, selfish. Sorry. Don't I'm be sorry. selfish. I got enough love for everybody. Okay, so right. Eric uh, Eric is the, I guess, head director... Uh, Commander. CEO of uh, a very, um, very important group of young guys, uh, well, a program called the Explorers. Do you want right. to tell us... Um, so basically what I do is I run an Infantry Explorer Post 311. Uh, it's an Explorer Post, like you have Police Explorer Posts and Fire Explorer Posts. Uh, this is for young uh, high school students who are interested in military careers. And so uh, we've got a crew, uh, we're based out of Irvine, California, and just uh, uh, got a crew of really dedicated young men and uh, actually had two gals graduate uh, last year. Uh, sorry to see them go by Frankel Sisters. Um, but. Uh, it's a really good program. Uh, we've been very blessed uh, in terms of the types of personnel we've got and the instructors that we have, and uh, also blessed in our relationships. Um, we're in fact uh, just recently sponsored by Evic, and Evic has helped us out quite a bit. And I got a I got a free patch. I'm yeah, sorry. we both <laughs> put that out. We got yeah, we, we all got free. Shades so, did not get a patch. Sorry, Shades. Yes. Oh yes. Sorry, Shades. Win, win for me. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, we're going to be at uh, Line Claws in the next couple of weeks, and uh, they allowed us to bring our whole post up there uh, to operate as a unit, as a squad together. So uh, yeah, we've been very fortunate in the relationships that we had and, and the program, the type of kids that we've had. We've got a couple seniors graduating this year. They're going to ROTC programs at UCLA and uh, USC. So You've got some really stellar individuals in your program. I mean, Shades and I and Miguel, you know, we had an opportunity to go down to a barbecue that you guys held. Really just... Um, Man, every every kid I met was stellar. Just the most yeah. polite, uh, mo most polite, uh, really cool people to talk to. Really smart too. Um, <laughs> you know, outstanding students, outstanding scholars, outstanding athletes. Um, uh, we yeah, we've just been very very blessed. So. Shout out to Beckman High School because that's where most of them are from. So. If you want more information about uh, the Explorer Pro the Infantry Explorer Program 311, you can find uh, information on your Facebook. On our Facebook page, Infantry Explorer Post 311. Link below. Yeah. Link below. We will do a link. No, 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 not, not here. No, no, I can't do in the, in the, in the Oh, in the description. In the description. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. Yeah, yeah it's okay. YouTube it's and just, we always still, forget like, to do like, the no, video. I can't, I can't bring it in. <laughs> so you guys know how we do here on NSRT. You guys submit your questions in a previous NSRT video. Those go into our uh, helm of reasoning, and then those questions are answered by a completely unqualified group of individuals, such as ourselves. Uh, so we'll do our best to answer our, uh, to your questions Um I guess based on personal experience and uh, and our and our experiences with airsoft. So our guest usually starts it off. Do you want to okay. grab one out of the helm? <sighs> or how funny we can be as usual. <laughs> or yeah, or it ends up just <laughs> being a ridiculous joke of things. I'm feeling kind of lucky because I'm actually in front of the helm of reasoning. I'm yeah. I want to call it the reject helmet. The reject helmet. Okay, helmet. so this question is from Matthew Sun. Aloha, Evic from the islands. How do you guys cope with darkness with night games? Are NVGs worth it, or is a tack light a good alternative? Ah. Okay. It depends on your budget. It depends. It really depends on your budget. Um, so for well, my experience with night games, um, I've seen everything from the f people bringing, honestly, the military $3,500 night vision goggles to uh, IR scopes. And really, to me, that's kind of ridiculous because it's airsoft. If you get yourself a good tack light and you employ it, properly you know not just shining <laughs> not it around really all <laughs> yeah um because you are yeah. a target you know it, when the light shines it, it does show where you are yeah it's <laughs> you know it's it's like uh what's called doug from up the movie up oh, shiny you know <laughs> so um but yeah as long as you're employing it correctly you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on night vision gear that just that's a little bit ridiculous to me when you're spending money on gear that costs as much as like six or seven airsoft guns you need to take a step back and reconsider your purchasing options. I think it depends more on what the player, because this is a player who does have night vision, who, it depends what you want to put your money towards. True. And it also, if you're using it for other purposes, maybe. Okay. But um, certainly agree that the minimum you need is just a good light, get a good uh, bloom, so that way you can see not just a spot. Yeah. Uh, get a good bloom, um, make sure it's solid, weapon mounted. Don't need a pressure switch all the time, but pressure switches are pretty uh, useful. Yeah. Um, 
And a, well, you're talking about just finding your way too. There's no replacement for a nice helmet light. The, I know the uh, the oh, light yeah. you've you got know, too, just for reading though, a map. You don't have those on all the time though, because then it is a beacon for you. Right, but, but. I, if you just need to see, you know, a path real yeah. quick. Yeah. You know, most fields we've played, I really didn't have a problem seeing in the dark once my eyes adjusted. Anyway, the one problem I had was when we played at the airsoft camp at that night game, when you're literally in the forest and there's no Nothing, lights yeah, you around. You can't see anything. Well, <laughs> of course, I made the mistake of wearing tinted lenses, oh. so that increased the difficulty. As the VIP, I was not given a light on purpose. I'm running around. I lose my crew. I'm running like balls out through stinging nettles. That's, yeah, that, that he, sounds like sabotage tinted to lenses. me, my friend. So. No, he just forgot the tinted I just, lenses. I just, <laughs> he could have borrowed some goggles. He just well, didn't think to ask anybody. I guess anybody. a quick note on uh, moving around at night. Uh, the way we were taught in infantry school is when you're moving around at night, you use a red light because uh, it doesn't screw up your night vision. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as opposed to like having a white light. And plus, a red light is not quite as visible over long distances as just a regular uh, white light is. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe adapting a, a light with like a red filter or red lens. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Cool. I mean, I remember seeing those like Vietnam era. Yeah, the like, old you can always, like, yeah. Yeah, you can always get the, like those covers too that just have the little flip up cover on your... Yeah, yeah sure, like Surefire makes some really good ones yeah, that yeah, just sure flip over. Awesome. Well, great so. question. Next victim. Next victim. I had a physics... Yeah. Teacher Oop. that always said next victim when he would draw. Anyway, like that's my drill sergeant said that all the time. So yeah, it sounds like something. All right, Strife Wolf. I'm moving on to real steel competitive shooting with my college practical shooting sports team. My airsoft friends said I should say I should keep my gear for practice, and my shooting ta team captains all tell me to get rid of it and train with real steel only because of the recoil um, and better habits. What is your opinion on this? Um, from everybody that I've talked to that does both real, uh, like competitive shooting or even real tactical shooting as well as airsoft, as long as you're practicing the same, uh, skill sets, the same mantra and the same kind of, uh, weapons manipulation that you do with a real firearm with airsoft and you're adapting, um, uh, those to airsoft and you're making sure that you're exactly or closely replicating what you're doing with real firearms, then uh, training and practicing with, with airsoft guns is entirely beneficial because you're yeah, going to be absolutely. able to manipulate your gear more quickly. You're going to get more comfortable with reloads. You're going to get more comfortable with weapons manipulation, like you know moving the stock around when you need to or um, you know deciding uh, where you want certain accessories. Because a lot of stuff, especially when you're talking about uh, um, tactical or even uh, competitive shooting, is, is comfortability with the weapons platform and uh, with the accessories that you've got attached to it. And so if you can practice those things in a safe environment like Airsoft and you can find what works for you and what doesn't, uh, it's A, less expensive than shooting real firearms. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and B, you're not endangering anybody else by, by uh, practicing on that kind of device. Well, if I could just piggyback on your comment. Um, if you're going to set up your Airsoft gun, set it up exactly the way you have your real steel gun set up. Because in the end, it's all about muscle memory. You want to maintain the same type of grip. You want to be able to maintain the same type of uh, stance, whatever you decide to use. Um, so if that way, when you're training with real steel and you switch back to your airsoft, you're still you know, maintaining the same hold. You're still maintain the same side picture everything that's it's all about muscle memory regardless of recoil yeah exactly regardless of recoil and then the i mean everything you guys said was was perfect i think the only thing to maybe piggyback on it as well is when you're playing airsoft you learn from your mistakes unlike you no one's going to shoot at you when you're doing a shooting competition whereas you're going to learn hey i shouldn't have gone through that doorway that way or i was exposing my leg too much or i my elbows out too far or something like that you're going to learn that through airsoft not through competitive shooting yeah so but like you said set everything up the same way um, and that's probably the best way to build good habits. It's interesting too. When we played simunition that one time, I feel like <clears throat> I feel like a lot of the techniques that we picked up playing airsoft made us more effective with simunition, even though they're not necessarily appropriate. How many times do people run out of words that's, that well, were eliminated? Yeah. Were, hold on, were eliminated because they oh just emptied God. their whole magazine. That's true. And then. I only what shot two that? shots, and both of them were were. were it's not hit, a high cap shots. simunition mag. What's the one with that nut shot I got though? <laughs> yeah, I got shot first, and him and Cliff. You learned that like, quickly. Like, don't hey, does it jump across hallways, bro. <laughs> gotcha. It's and the, the, the mask would like fog up so badly, I really couldn't even see. Uh, uh, it was horrible. Those masks were obnoxious. Yeah, no, that was definitely one instance where I preferred airsoft. Oh, All right, uh, Cameron Stella. Do you know what the first airsoft gun was? Moss, I think, or no, probably a Springer of some kind. It was well, back in the day. This is going way back. The only airsoft guns you could buy 
were from like Taiwan or Japan. Mm -hmm. And so like I'd go home on the summer during the summers uh, and come back with these goofy looking little airsoft pistols mm -hmm. and we use no eye pro and run around my buddy's house and shoot at each other. But the first one that I remember was actually kind of cool. It was a Smith and Wesson. Uh, it was a shell ejecting Springer. So you'd have to, rather than rack the slide back, you'd have to push it forward and load around from the magazine. And when you pull the trigger, the slide would rock back and the shell would pop out. What? That's cool. Yeah. I have, see, I haven't been around long enough Neither to see yeah, I'm old. the original. <laughs> It's okay. not that old. You're young in spirit. He's just more experienced. No, oh, there we go. Yes. Old age and That's treachery. what we'll go with. Experience. <clears throat> All right, now you want to pick the next question? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. you. Wow, you're a jerk. Man. He's super, yeah, he lots of experience. Why, why He's got I, so why much Why do I hang out with him? I, don't I don't know why you hang out with him. Oh, this is a good long one. Okay. This is by Kevin Atencio. Yep. Atencio. Okay. If you butcher people's names, we do it all the time. Right on. Time. Okay. Dear insert and guest, what do you do... What do you do if you're missing a very specific part of your gun, i.e. a screw and a GBB slide? I recently lost the screw that connects my rear sights to the feeding system in my TMG-17, and I can't seem to find a way to replace it. Here's what you do. Call us. <laughs> Sometimes. And we will take care of you. Sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the time. Depends on the product. 99% you know, <laughs> of the time. <laughs> the product availability, you know, like a, a place that we work with, we'll be able, we'll be able to get the part for you. Uh, another good trick, though, is look at boneyard sales and stuff like that. Sometimes you could get yep. some really good parts that you can kind of scrounge together. A TMG17, you're gonna maybe have some hard time getting. Uh, yeah, it right can't. Now. It can't hurt to call. I've had a lot of personally. I've had a lot of my own airsoft guns worked on here, and the job that they do is stellar. Uh, in fact, they're working on my right now. It's a KSC, but they're working on it right now. The other Matt's got it. I gotta bleep that out. Right. Well, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I mean, if you don't want to call, that's cool, too. You just email us, and uh, we'll do our best to find you the part. If we can't, we will uh, certainly attempt to find you a replacement uh, that is compatible. And, and if all else fails, there are companies like Granger and McMaster that make uh, and manufacture and retail screws uh, and, and attachment hardware. So as long as you can figure out the thread pitch, um, you can usually find a replacement screw uh, or check a hobby store. I mean, RC cars and, and airsoft guns use a lot of the same uh, hmm, that's crossover. That's true. That's true. Uh, crossover oh, hardware and things like that so there yeah. are options out there and just uh, research a little bit worst comes to worst comes to worst it's an excuse to buy a new pistol <laughs> <laughs> I can't find I like a screw thinking. time for an m and 9 <laughs> honey it's broken I need new one okay anyway and then you fix the old one you're like now yeah. I have two now you have two there you go double fist it it'll be just like the matrix like it wouldn't be so cool to have that closet you know to be like I want guns <laughs> I've always wanted like the countertop that flips over to reveal, oh. just like my kitchen counter. Like, yeah. you guys want to see some cool at this party we're having? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, Greyhound one... airsofting. Dear insert, if you had to go, if you had a chance to go to an airsoft game dressed as Big Bird or Elmo, which one oh. would you pick? Dude, Big Bird all the way. Yeah. Oh wait, Big no, Bird. Elmo would be pretty cool too. Almost, well, almost a little bit creepier to me. So if I wanted to scare somebody, I feel like if I'm going to dress up in the costume though, I've got to do the character's voice, and it would be far <laughs> more difficult to maintain Elmo voice the whole time than That's it would a... be to do Big Bird. Yes, oh, totally. you know what though? I wouldn't pick any of those. Then if we're doing voices, because I would just do Grover. Grover. <laughs> but it's, it's only it's only one of the two though. He gave uh, us only, only two, gave two, options. two options. Okay, fine. So which one would you pick? Well, I can't do Big Bird, so I'd have to do Elmo. So we're all doing Elmo. I guess so. I mean, if we had He's another character red. option, like I would, I would do Ernie. Hi, nice kill. Like, and shades would be, and shades would be. <laughs> Headshot, boom. He would be okay, mute, anyway. Bert. He would be silent. Bert. Oh, there you so go. We'd do Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. That would work. Bert and Ernie. Right? That would work. Like I could awkward. be Ernie and be like the awkward, weird, <laughs> awkward Bert and Ernie yeah. uh, on the airsoft field. Right? Yeah, it's it's like Penn and Teller in <laughs> puppet form. And I'll be Oscar the Grouch because I'm grouchy. There you go. Perfect. But yeah, a plus Big Bird, you know, you've got a lot more room to put Molly panels. True. <laughs> and he's got the Big whole tactical, right? right? All right, Matt. Sing yeah. over the wall yeah. thing. Here, Matt, go. He's <clears throat> recon. Okay, uh, Matt Parage asks, Hey, Evic, what are your thoughts on SMGs being used in long-range outdoor skirmishes? Anything a, works. Just yeah. <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. Um, if it I mean, can hit the target for you, that's fine. I mean, it's airsoft. The guns all have similar yeah. ranges anyway. I mean, it's not like you're going to have, if you have a bolt action sniper rifle, airsoft rifle, you're going to have an advantage over uh, any other type of weapon in terms of distance and range. 
Yeah, in terms of like rifles, there is not an airsoft gun that can match the minimum engagement distance of a real firearm. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking about an SMG, none of the distances we play in airsoft can even, you know, touch, like, the SMG's effective range. Even if we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, MP9s and things like that, like, we, you know, the, the effective yeah. range is much farther out. So, you know, as long as you have a, a decent barrel and hop-up that can get the distance that you're looking for, who cares how short it is yeah, or how long for it is. Real. I mean, if your friends are giving you crap over having an SMG when they have all these cool daddy M14s or whatever, tell them to... Take a hike and just use what's comfortable for you, man. Show up yeah, as they big bear. Be your friends Rock anyway. their world. <laughs> Wait, what? I said show up as show up as big bear. Wait, big, big bird. Bear. Big bird. Big bird. Show up, big bird. Did you go to school? No. Did you graduate from high school? No. Just checking. I started thinking. I started thinking you didn't. <laughs> Would you like to? Oh, so my turn. Next yeah, question. Yeah, yeah let's go. please let's, let's move on. We'll just have this awkward. We want an awkward <laughs> silence. Here. I like awkward silence. Awkward silence. Ooh. So from Muharram Barak. Sorry about that. I butchered your name. Um, hey, insert. Why do my BBs curve left or right at the end of their flight? Not during the whole flight, but on the end of it. Is it because the BBs lost a bit of its backspin? Um, I would say if it's going one of each way at the end of its flight would probably be just the tight tightness of the barrel. If you use a tight bore barrel, it will tighten that grouping up a little bit. That's the only thing I could think of, unless there's a um, barrel misalignment or a, a bad hop up bucking. I can bad think of hop up bucking or a bad crown on the top of the barrel if you cut your barrel. I was gonna say uh, there can there can be several uh, uh, there can be several systemic issues that that can cause a BB's traje tra trajectory to differ uh, both left and right. Um, if you can and you're you've got enough knowledge to remove the barrel from the gun, I would roll test it and make sure that it's actually straight because oh, yeah. a slight slight bend in a barrel especially if you're using like a stock barrel uh can inherently affect um the bb's path it might just be a dirty Oof. barrel and that's the yeah. other thing is yeah. is one you know grain can send a bb off or you know don't use lopsided bbs yeah maybe changing your bbs too might help yeah there's Lop a whole bunch of things you can <laughs> do. A sphere. I don't maybe know. with you know. more specific uh <laughs> but you know try try each one of those things in sequence and see what works and what doesn't and then uh Go from there. If it if you if you try all that stuff and it's still you still have that problem, take it in somewhere and have it. You know, there's at. probably like an actual like specific reason that none of us know why it's. Well, we're not genius. Gremlins. We'll have so to right, bring we're, in. We're gonna do our last here. question here. Okay. So we have MW two mod and mods and stuff. What kind of name is that? Modern Warfare two, two. mods and stuff. Yeah, I, I got it. Oh, okay. I'm just. He's a mod. Uh, Stating the obvious. On the <laughs> Hello, Evic. My question is, what do you think about electric airsoft pistols and their reliability? Which electronic pistol slash machine, pi mis wow. machine pistol would you recommend? I have no experience with them. The only, one I, the only electric pistols I have experience with were those little tiny M16s and stuff. And that's not exactly what yeah, we're Yeah, I think in terms of like a handgun, I wouldn't... I think most of them are kind of almost unplayable in standard airsoft um, situations. The yeah. thing about small framed electric airsoft guns like pistols is that they can't use the standard battery packs that other airsoft guns <coughs> use. I think for the most part, the ones you'll find are the ones that use those uh, the contacts that are integrated. They're like those 7.2 volts. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And they're somewhat smaller, and charging them can be a chore. Uh, and lack of compatibility with your other airsoft guns can also um, affect, you know, whether or not you use them often. Uh, but the the other the other problem problem that I've noticed is that because it's electric and you're using a smaller motor and there's a completely different system, when something does break on them, it can be harder to find replacement parts. Um, so their durability, you know, is uh, called into question. From personal experience, the only time I've ever used a electric pistol is in the storefront last week when we were done filming, and I was farting around in one of the pistol cabinets, and I grabbed one that I thought was a Springer, and it turned out to be electric, <laughs> and I entertained myself for about 45 minutes. So that's what Entertain you yourself. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's like, I, I literally a, <coughs> stayed in the <coughs> shooting range for 45 minutes. Uh, for me, electric pistols are more of like a backyard if you if it's yeah. legal in your city to yeah. play in the backyard, it's one of those like starter pistols that get you into airsoft and they're fun and they're not that expensive. It's kind of like yeah. a little bit of a step up from a spring. <clears throat> well, from yeah. a practical standpoint too, the magazines are those little tiny skinny ones, right? I mean, yeah. there's there's no piece of gear that you're going to be able to hold those in, and you know, I don't even think um, you'd be able to find extra magazines for it anyway. That's, no, you just that's stack like four of them in, in like one, one pocket. <laughs> so you've got to hold on. The, the little, just, oh, the the little, little fell out. flare pouch the, on the on the yeah. ACU. <laughs> oh, the pencil <laughs> pouches. <Right. coughs> But was that our last? Uh, yeah, our uh, last we could do one more. Uh, that was. Let's do one more and end it with. Uh, oh, end it with. Thank you. Okay. All right, going deep. We're going deep. Going, it, going really it, deep. Going deep. 
right. Okay, so the next question is last from... Question. Last question is from Jesse Hurt. Hi, Vike. Uh, how and what... What and how does a Daytona gun and how does it work? Uh, also, what are the pros and cons compared to a Polar Star? Well, it's unfortunate that uh, that uh, Shades, who's our resident Daytona gun and Polar Star expert, I mean, he, he loves these these gas powered hybrid guns, uh, but he's filming for us today instead of being in, being front, in of front of the camera. He's behind um, it, but, but he's he giving me sign language anyway. so that I can explain talk. whiteboard. So I can yeah, no. explain so things to you So it's going to be like a whiteboard demonstration I'm trying to interpret here. What he's saying. Okay, so right. the Polar Star. Okay, so the Polar Star and the Daytona gun are essentially uh, both. Um, they both use AEG mags, and they both are powered externally by an HPA tank. Mm -hmm. The main difference is that a Polar Star uses two solenoids. Again, okay, the Polar Star uses two solenoids. Uses two solenoids, one to load the round, and the other one to shoot the round. There you go. So, and it has electronic and board and, and, and stuff. And it's electronically controlled right. by a control unit, so you have to have a battery powering it as well to the air tank. Right, and but then a Daytona gun is essentially a gas blowback rifle that uses a tank instead of a gas mag. Mm -hmm. So you have the trigger pull releases a valve, uh, yeah. which sends gas forward, and then the, the non-spent propellant gas is used to blow back yeah. a blowback so assembly. The, now, and what is cooler? Tube. They're both about the same, but I, I the blowback from a Daytona gun is... Mule size is just like a GBB, if not a little bit heavier, oh. and the feedback in a Polar Star is nothing. I'm, I'm a <laughs> big fan of the KISS principle, so the less complicated a system is, the more reliable it seems to me. So, if the I Daytona gun is all mechanical, yeah, so I would choose if I had to choose between the two, I'd go with Daytona. That's just me, except so. we watched Shades build as a Daytona, and it actually took a lot longer. To get <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, it was, it was a journey than you would think. So, your, your, your philosophy it's is not actually just the opposite. About <laughs> Because well, once the it polar done, star, you just drop it in and plug it oh, in, and it true. works. I think that's there's true. certainly an advantage and a disadvantage to using both platforms versus AEGs and gas blowbacks. If you are comfortable using an air tank and you want an airline as part of your rig, and you're you're yeah. okay with manipulating that on the field, great, go for it. They're both very fun and exciting, different ways to play yep. airsoft and with airsoft guns. If you're not comfortable using those things, you don't want that extra whatever's going on with it. The hose. Stick with your yeah. GBBs and AEGs. Yeah, plus they're really expensive. If so. it was me, I'd probably land on the tank and explode it. So launch yourself across. <laughs> like, like I what, would like accidentally like I you know I'd it. flip around and hit a wall and then I'd take off like the Rocket Man because yeah, makes sense. Juice is coming yeah, out the that bottom. About right. Look, mom, it's Del it's Delta Force. No, honey, yeah. that's Iron and then Man. you'd have the same situation <laughs> where Shades walks into camera and sees me doing something stupid and looks knowingly breaking the fourth <laughs> wall like this yeah. idiot. Well, yeah. Just like Eric said earlier. You have you can spend your money on you'd basically be both guns would be costing you in pretty yeah. uh, all said and done probably about a thousand dollars. You can buy, almost buy a real or rifle you could, for you, that. You, oh yeah, exactly. You could buy a real rifle for that practically, or you could buy a few. I spent that much on my pistol. It's cool. And then you lost it. It's cool. I can, yeah. I use it all the time. I can, I don't I don't hang it up on the wall afraid to use Daddy it. Daddy bought it for him. It's not true. <laughs> not true. I worked for that. I did it myself. Okay, so that, I'm a big I'm a big boy. I bought it myself. <laughs> So that was the last question. So now the rest of the video is basically we just having banter with each other and making fun of Matt. Awesome. I, I can well, thanks that. again for joining us on this no, see, episode now, of the Not So Round Table. Off. We have to go. Uh, once again, if you haven't looked at the description to find out more information uh, about Eric's group, the Infantry Explorer Post 311, you can find that in the link below. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Um, I really love what you do, and, and it's uh, great having you on. Honestly, you, you guys have been, like I said earlier, just a real blessing to our organization, and it's it's been a blast getting to know you guys and playing with you guys and well, hanging we, out. So Sadly, we won't be able to... Uh Oh, yeah, you, you this year. You have we, we to go apologize. shoot airsoft guns from helicopters. I'm sorry. Well, that's like a, that's a small that's a small perk. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will have some of our other guys there. Yeah, so. picks it or it didn't happen, man. That's all I gotta say. You, you all could, right, well, you can still treat Miguel like your slave if you want. I don't care. Okay, done, done. I'm so I, done. I told I'm him so actually, with that. he, that's his that's his price for admission is he's your slave. Sweet, <laughs> just three eleven p on. We'll just put it on a patch. <laughs> But All right, guys. Uh, well, he's a step below your, our, your, your cadets. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so works. Table Perfect. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that. it's okay. I was. Yeah, it's fine. We can just keep talking. Yeah, it's we'll it's just good. fade to black as well, <laughs> making fun of me some more. Oh it's my god! Did I get it right? Is it? Is it, I get the? Are we done? Are we good? Yeah, we're done. Perfect.